So it's my first time in the, in the Jahrestagung of the DMV. And because I live in Argentina, I never had the possibility to join the meeting and I'm really happy. So I will now share my screen so that we can start. This is Zoom, start. Uh, could you please confirm that you can see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. You can see it. <laughs> so this is uh, my talk entitled Teaching Gödel and the Limits of Mathematical Knowledge with Arts. My name is Demian Nawal Goz. I am from the Universidad Nacional de Rosario and the Universidad Austral here in Argentina. And well, let's start. Here, here I am and here's Gödel. <laughs> I would like to present in this talk uh, this artwork of mine and how I use it in my lectures. Um, it's called Incompleteness. Of course, it's a reference to Gödel's Incompleteness theorems and it is a digitized drawing hopla, on a jigsaw puzzle. Before I start, I would like to give a brief introduction uh, on my way of working and because it will explain why I do this and how I think when I do this kind of activities. Then I will present the, the actual uh, jigsaw puzzle, the, the activity uh, connected to Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And finally, some conclusions, uh, both my own conclusions and all the conclusions I had with my students. So first introduction, I am uh, not only a mathematician, but also a teacher in German as a foreign language. And of course, both mathematics and German are very difficult to learn. And in the case of German, there has been a lot of research been done to improve the ways of teaching German. And I work with them. So today, uh, my courses in German are really, really interactive. We try to stimulate all kinds of perception, not only to listen to the teacher, but that they have to join the lecture and be part of the lecture. So I guide them instead of only uh, teaching them and lecturing. So I started using the techniques I learned as a teacher in German as a foreign language in my math courses. So today I have a new entirely different structure of teaching. First of all, I, my lectures are basically storytelling. For that, I started drawing mathematicians, so the, the, the figures of my stories have faces and not only names. I started writing about mathematics and mathematicians and even creating some comics. This all always in the background of my lectures, so I use these uh, uh, productions, texts and comics in my lectures. My main goal in these uh, approaches is to avoid mathematical formulas and, if possible, the mathematics behind it. So it, the idea is that the students have to find the mathematics behind the, the activities I create. Here an example of a small comic I created. It's called Mathematical Meta Comic. And this is a reference to Chris Paradox. So Chris Paradox states, if a statement is true, then A. If this statement is true, then A, where A is any kind of statement you want. And of course, this is a paradox and because this, if you consider this kind of statement, then you can prove any kind of statements you want. A can be A and no a negative A and you have a contradiction. And here in my comic, of course, the students have to first understand that this is a if clause. The natural geometry of a comic also already hints to that, but also if not, then you have here the if then. And finally, you have serious trouble, so you know here is an inconsistency. And finally, the students have to understand that the problem is in the first part where there is some kind of self-reference to the own truth value. So once they discuss their observations, we can talk about Kerr's paradox and we analyze it mathematically. But I try to use these kind of activities to, to show them a different angle and 
point of view of these kind of problems. Another example uh, is this series of mine. Um, this is, of course, inspired by René Magritte's um, Try So des Images. Hopla. And here, again, I may, I, these, these are small references to different paradoxes and unexpected results in mathematics. Here, for instance, we have hopla, ah, the infinite monkey theorem. Uh, here we have the Monty Hall problem, Gödel, Hilbert. And again, these are activities I create for my students. So I give them, in this, in this case, I give them these small images and they have a week or two to solve them, to understand what's the mathematics behind them. And with this background, I would like to now present uh, the main section of this presentation, Gödel's incompleteness theorem and the jigsaw puzzle. So I gave a group of students of mine a jigsaw puzzle. I didn't say anything at all, just please solve this for me. I have no time. Please help me. I have to have this solved uh, by next week. And these are students from the very beginning of the, the, the the career, in their careers, so they are just out of school and starting mathematics. And the problem I detected is that they won't be seeing Gödel's incompleteness theorems during their their study, because uh, today the the first courses that usually contain this kind of uh, mathematical content is shared with other. Um, students from physics and engineering and so this was left out of the program and they won't see this so i said it is very important that they see this but i won't use a primitive recursive formula and the diagonal diagonal uh, thinking of Gödel. i don't want to make this too complicated again i want to avoid formulas because this isn't part of the curriculum i simply want them to know that, that that this exists. So they gathered together one evening and started solving the jigsaw puzzle. And when they finally arrived at the end, they found that one piece is missing. Of course, I did not tell them that one piece was missing. And they even didn't know that this has to do with Kurt Grill. So of course they were um, puzzled and they, they did not expect this uh, outcome. Here I would like to share a video I got from them from the exact moment when they realized that the piece was missing. So this was, of course, an emotional reaction to the, the jigsaw puzzle, but it, it was precisely the, the idea behind this whole activity. So the students uh, did not expect a piece to be missing uh, because I did not reveal this uh, deal from the outset. So when I gave them the puzzle so they can solve it, uh, they had one key expectation to complete the puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle. After all, their experience and intuition led them to expect a complete puzzle, uh, just like mathematicians like David Hilbert expected mathematics to be complete. So uh, solving the jigsaw puzzle and putting the last piece is usually some kind of climax of the whole activity and of solving the puzzle. And it's the last piece and putting in where it belongs. Uh, and by taking this moment of satisfaction from them, 
I created a, a very emotional reaction to the to the theme of the uh, of the jigsaw puzzle itself and priving the students of these satisfactory feelings is turned on to be really interesting so that was the most important most important idea behind this activity and now i would like to go and face the last part conclusions and well, future work so of course this uh, jigsaw puzzle um, on itself can be uh, considered an artwork in, in fact it was uh, part of the mass art gallery uh, in the of the bridges conference um, and it and the idea however was is that this is not the, the, the art the art itself is not only the jigsaw puzzle but the whole uh, emotional uh, uh, involvement involvement of the students so it's some kind of performance art where the the art is done by the students who solve the jigsaw puzzle and not so much the puzzle itself and once they solved it and once they realized that one piece was missing the the main idea was that they should uh, understand what the mathematics behind this is so i summed them together to a to a meeting so that we can discuss the 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 conclusions and when they got there they already had some observations to make because of course they don't know could girl or perhaps they do but they had some uh, some interesting hints on the background in the, in the background we have the text of Kurt Gödel's seminar paper on formally undecidable propositions of Principia Mathematica and related systems. So if they Googled this, and, and that's actually what they did, if, if they Googled this, they already knew this is about Gödel and about the incompleteness theorems and they would understand, okay, this missing piece is part of the, of the jigsaw puzzle. It's not that something is missing, it's that it's the way it is. So what did we discuss? Of course, the first observation, if, uh, of course, the, the missing piece represents Kutgul's theorem. And the conclusion is each piece of the jigsaw puzzle represents a mathematical statement. And of course, we know that that the statement, the missing statement is true because we can imagine what it would look like. So you can draw the lines if you want. But the, the fact that it is missing is, uh, means that the mathematical formal system we're working with will no, never get to this piece. And then they had some additional conclusions. For instance, if every statement is uh, a uh, if, every, every, if each jigsaw puzzle piece is a mathematical statement, then the first ones we take, usually the, the, are the border ones, are the axiom of, of our system, the first pieces we take and the ones we work with. You can also make some uh, interpretation, interpretations on what consistency of a mathematical system means using this analogy with the jigsaw puzzle. And finally, another observation, if each statement is uh, a piece, then proving a theorem is just like putting the two pieces together. Okay, and finally, um, the, this activity wasn't, as I said, it was not part of the curriculum, so I, I didn't put any grades on them on something like this. But what I observed is that they really got uh, engaged with the, these kind of problems. Um, and today they have a, a strong focus on foundational questions in, in each and one of the uh, subjects they uh, attend to. They, they always talk about the axiom of choice and, 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 and statements that are um, important uh, when it comes to foundational questions. So I, I did this just so they know about Gödel's theorem and what they mean. And of course, when we met, I fo strongly focused on discussing what the, the theorems actually mean because 
it is very easy to misinterpret them and understand something wrong when, when we talk about Gödel. So my, for me, it was important to talk about this so that they really understand what it means. But uh, I think the, the, the enthusiasm uh, still lasts. And I, I would say that they forgave me for my devilish activities and, and putting them into these stressful situations. So yes, that would be uh, my presentation. Future work, of course, and um, today this activity of the jigsaw puzzle, here you have an example, I created a more simple version uh, to use in my lectures. The, 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 this activity wa was a very long lasting one. It, uh, they needed five hours to solve the problem. But now for my lectures, I have a more simple one. So here we have some references and thank you very much.